Thank you. Uh, it's now uh, my turn not just to preside as uh, Senator Durbin is off to vote. He'll return uh, in a few minutes. Uh, it's also my opportunity to ask questions be, uh, before recognizing Senator Ossoff, and then we'll proceed to the second panel. But first, a couple of points of clarification. Uh, I think uh, some of my colleagues, through their questioning, through their statements, have uh, caused a little confusion. Not sure if it's intentional or unintentional, but Secretary Vilsack, can you clarify for everybody watching us here today, are you the Secretary of Homeland Security or are you the Secretary of Agriculture? I'm the Secretary of Agriculture, Senator. Thank you very much. That's what I thought coming into this hearing. And so uh, uh, I will uh, focus my questions appropriately so on issues of agriculture and the agricultural industry and your portfolio of responsibility. Uh, second, I just uh, feel compelled to respond to some of the comments some of my colleagues on the Republican side of the aisle have made regarding the uh, appropriateness of considering the reconciliation process to advance uh, the elements of the Farm Workforce Modernization Act or other elements of immigration uh, reform. Their uh, suggestion that uh, this is best done on a bipartisan basis through bipartisan negotiations, which you know, if I felt they would be fruitful, uh, I would absolutely welcome. It's not like we haven't been trying for the last six months, uh, but it's clear that uh, while some of our colleagues suggest, well, I support this, I support that, I support dreamers, I support farm workers, they're quick to raise excuses and pretexts for why we can't do anything. And finally, uh, just uh, can't help but observe the contradiction. I believe it was uh, uh, S Senator Durbin described Senator Graham's comments as, well, it makes no sense to say we can't do anything unless you do everything while Senator Tillis, among others, have suggested, well, when you try to do everything, we've been unsuccessful for years and years and years. So let's uh, sort of ratchet down the scope of what we're trying to do to more of a piecemeal approach. You can't have it both ways. Turn it to agriculture. Uh, Mr. Secretary, in 2019, California produced $50 billion in agricultural commodities. California alone. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the state is a, also a major exporter of agricultural products and makes up 16% of total U.S. agricultural exports, totaling $21.7 billion. In addition, more than one-third of the country's fruits and nuts are grown in California, including 80% of the global supply of almonds and nearly 90% of U.S. grown strawberries. Yet California and other states across the country are facing the chronic labor shortage that you've spoken to already. The American Farm Bureau Federation estimates that in total, U.S. agriculture needs 1.5 to 2 million hired workers each year. But farmers are struggling to fill these positions. In 2019, prior to the pandemic, 56% of California farmers reported being unable to find all of the workers they needed for their main crop over the last five years. Again, that was prior to COVID. Mr. Secretary, about 400,000 workers represent California's agricultural workforce. More than 60, upwards of 75% of these workers are undocumented. Given the overrepresentation of undocumented immigrants in this industry, how could providing a pathway to legalization for farm workers bolster the U.S. economy and trade relations? It would provide stability to Western growers, Senator, uh, and that's one of the reasons why the Western growers have been uh, at the front uh, of an effort to try to get this compromise uh, formed and ultimately through the House and, and to the Senate. Uh, I think they recognize that they, with that stability, they can plan, uh, they can make determinations about uh, expansion opportunities, they can figure out ways in which they can be more productive. Uh, which creates more opportunities not only for domestic consumption but also exports and in turn supports all of the jobs that are essentially in the supply chain that results from the fruit that's being picked and grown in your state. Uh, so at the end, and your state is, a, is the number one agricultural state uh, in terms of productivity, in terms of sales. So obviously anything you all do uh, that can benefit and expand opportunities in California will have a positive impact on agriculture generally. And as I indicated, uh, agriculture and the food industry is roughly 20% of the American economy. So at the end of the day, uh, it would provide for a more robust and stronger and more stable American uh, economy. 
Great. Uh, appreciate your description on the uh, benefits of this act. Should it become law? Uh, can you shed a little bit more light, describe in slightly more detail, short of passage, what some of the challenges, operational and otherwise, in the agricultural sector, uh, because the workforce is not currently stable? Well, uh, many of the farmers that we're talking about are people, the average age of the American farmer today is uh, ne nearly 60 years of age. And many of these farmers are now trying to determine what they do next in terms of the next generation. Uh, if they don't feel that they have uh, access to additional workers, uh, they may constrain uh, the size of their operations. And at the end of the day, uh, those operations may not be as profitable. They may not be uh, able to support as many families as necessary uh, in, in the family farming operation. That may result in the sale uh, of those lands and the reduction of agricultural uh, activity, agricultural land in the country. We lose about 2,000 acres of land uh, every single day already, uh, so that would probably potentially see an acceleration of that. And ultimately, over time, if we don't deal with this issue and don't provide stability, ultimately, over time, we will we'll continue to see um, uh, the, the, the economic challenges of agriculture can continue to mount, and eventually, uh, it could compromise the security that we currently enjoy, which is the ability to essentially produce all the food that we need for our own people as well as for exports. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next up.